Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome to Ontario Telescope TV. It's Steve again uh, this Saturday morning. I apologize for that. I am a little bit late. Uh, you know, there was a bit of a family emergency this morning and uh, hopefully everything will be fine. Um, so I might need to close up early today. I, I don't know. But I have a very special um, uh, session, uh, broadcast today, where I am doing the um, photonic uh, cleaning of a uh, filter. So yesterday I took one of my filters and I took my, my big thumb and I did this intentionally. I know it's not something we want to see um, but uh, it happens sometimes. We get fingerprints on our optics, sometimes we get uh, sap on our optics or watermarks or optics just get dirty in general. So I am going to go over, oh well, I'm going to demonstrate, um, I have a filter here. All right. This is a uh, this is a UHC filter, right? And I get really close. Maybe you kind of see there is the this big there it is, thumbprint on it. And uh, I'm going to uh, clean that off. So let's um, let's do that. So I have this multi-camera setup that I'm trying out for the first time. Um, I've been inspired by Tom, the Astro Canuck, on his multi-camera setup and his awesome transitions. He goes back and forth. So I'm going to try to do the same thing, hopefully. Um, yes, Tom, I hope all is well, too. Everything should be fine. Um, you know, fingers crossed. Uh, we should be good. I'll, I'll let you know. I, I owe you some stuff, too. I apologize for not getting that to you sooner. Um, I hope my, uh, my initial image, my mug's coming out nice and clear. I got a new camera uh, pointing right at me. And um, I got this new arrangement here. You can see my... Oops, there it is. My website and also uh, we have a uh, my logo and we have uh, an introduction to lunar and solar system imaging workshop coming up in the next uh, a few weeks on the 29th um, that is not right it says Thursday it should be a Tuesday so I got to get that corrected but it's the 29th which is a Tuesday and uh, we'll be doing a workshop there there's links on the uh, web page anyways let let's uh, let's take a look here so what are we going to be uh, looking at we're going to be looking at this this is the first contact polymer um, uh, solution from uh, First Contact, and it is a uh, uh, liquid that we put right onto our optics. It is safe for optics, and it gets right down to the atomic level. When you when you peel it off, it is a, that satisfying peeling action that you get um, when you like when you get a brand new phone. And you're peeling off that plastic, right, or a remote control, or or something like that. Um, we kind of get the same effect with it. Uh, it. It's really, really cool stuff. We can clean any optics with it. We can actually even clean our sensor uh, with a product that they make. And um, I'll get into that in a little bit. So I'm going to uh, go to my uh, my filter. I put my filter down on my desk. This is working. I am, I am surprised and impressed with myself. Let's see if we can get the zoomed in a little bit more. Nope, that's the wrong way. All right, there we go. So we can see... There's a, I got this nice light above me. Um, there is a thumbprint there. So give me a thumbs up if you can see the thumbprint. Um, this is uh, uh, not something we want on our filters. I literally, I literally went like that on my filter. So here's what we have. I'm going to show you what I've got. Uh, Tom, how am I doing with my transitions? <laughs> All right, so I have this kit, and I've got some of these kits available right now. I'll put the link into the comments. Um, actually, I'll put the link in the comments now. Uh, I thought I could. Can I do this? There it is. Okay. There's a link in the comments. This is a trial kit. So this is a, a little sample of what the first contact solution is. This is uh, $49.99. Um, what this has in it, it has a cleaning solution. It has a pipette, so we can pull that solution out. Uh, I'm not going to be using that today. It also has a uh, little sample here on what it looks like and some other uh, cool things. So we are going to get this uh, going. Um, and uh, so I've got some of these kits available right now um, uh, for sale on the website. And uh, they are available to anyone who wants to buy one to try it out. Maybe you have an eyepiece. Maybe you have a filter you need cleaning. You don't need the entire kit. Um, but we can, uh, so you can use this for now. I've cleaned a, a few filters with so far um, uh, for a couple of customers actually this week. 
I had a customer come in and he picked up a new uh, reducer and he, he put a thumb on it, his thumbprint on it, and, and we cleaned that off uh, without any issue. So uh, 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 this would be good. I had another customer who bought a filter. He bought an Antlia three nanometer filter and um, it had a thumbprint on it um, or a fingerprint on it for, for some reason. And uh, it, um, I say a lot of ums, I shouldn't really be doing that. It didn't look good. So we put the first contact polymer on it, we let it sit, and we literally peeled it off and it was like a brand new filter. So this stuff is safe for, for any type of optics or coating. And uh, we'll get into more detail about that. Okay, so here's our filter. And I have my little bag of uh, polymer. So I'm gonna open this up. And uh, that's what it looks like. It looks like a nail polish um, bottle, really. Uh, there's a lot of product in here, so I think you can buy something like this um, for your filters or your eyepiece would be really good. Uh, there's some accessories you might, uh, some things you might want to get for an eyepiece or for a um, refractor telescope if you're going to clean it with this product or another one. Um, it's available in a spray solution as well. It's a little bit diluted and we literally spray it onto our mirrors. So if you have um, a Newtonian that you need to get uh, cleaned off, if you have a, uh, the mirror is like really dirty, if you have an SCT that you took apart or the corrector, we can literally spray this product on there instead of uh, brushing it on or, dri or dripping it on and, and doing one of these. So what the, uh, uh, and that puts a nice even spread and then we literally just let it dry and peel it off. Now, if you're gonna be doing that, uh, I'll get into a little more detail, but we need to add some O-rings just to prevent things from getting behind the optics. But for now, we're just gonna uh, do a more localized uh, test. So what else is in this uh, in this kit? Let's go let's go through it. The uh, kit comes with uh, the polymer, right? It, it's originally packaged in this black bag. Uh, that's to keep the sunlight out of it. It won't react with the sunlight in a negative way, but what it does is it will change a color from a red to more of a clear. So we keep this in a dark, cool location. Um, the warehouse right now is quite cool, uh, so that that so that is satisfied right there. There's that pipette, so we can stick it in, suck some out. Drop it on. Right. There is also some uh, dental floss, right, and this mesh, and we use this mesh to attach it to the polymer after we put it on, so we can peel it off easily. Uh, there's also a similar uh, item in here, these these sticky tabs that will do the exact same thing. And then we have a sample. There it is. Let me get it out of of what it looks like. So it's just a little piece of glass with uh, the solution on it. So you get an idea of what it should look like on there. And then there's also instructions. So I'm gonna do a demonstration on how this works. I'm gonna put all this back in, put it aside for now. Okay, so I have my filter here. You can see, there we go. I have my filter here. And we can, I'm gonna take the solution. I'm gonna put this on a, there we go. We take the solution itself, right, and we can literally brush it on. That's one, right? Or I can literally just pour it on. Put a few drops of it there. Oops, didn't want to do that. And I'm just gonna brush it around. Now, when I went to AIC in May, this was a technique that was demonstrated to me by the CEO of the company. What he does with an SCT, he just literally pours it on and brushes it around. It's a nice, thin, even layer. Okay, we're going to let that sit. Oh, you didn't really see what I was doing. We're going to let that sit. So it covers off the entire thumbprint. We're going to let that sit for a minute and I'm going to take the mesh there it is I'm going to take the mesh that's in the in the kit you can see it's already been cut up a little bit because I've used this a few times and I'm going to cut off a piece. I hate this knife. But it was a free knife. 
so I have a piece here. Alright, this is set for a little bit, and we can see, hopefully we can, you can see, see there's a, those ridges on it? So those, right, that, that's, it's drying, so it's solidifying right now. But it's not ready to be pulled off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the mesh on it. Let it sit there. And I'm going to get some more polymer. And I'm going to put the polymer on the mesh just to try to connect it all together. This gives me a nice solid, so it all becomes one. Now, the important thing is we do the, the initial layer of polymer first. We don't put the mesh or the dental floss directly onto the optic itself because then you'll have residue you need to deal with. And then you're actually going to be doing this again. So we'll let that sit for a moment and, and go from there. Okay. Let's take a look at some of these comments. Hey Gary, well, good morning from Kingston. I hope Kingston is treating you well. I like Kingston, it's a nice town. Um, Andrew, oh, the CC on Facebook is accurate. Oh, do I have that turned on? I didn't know. <laughs> awesome. Uh, who else is on? Um, uh, David, good morning, David. Good morning, Steve. Yeah, we should try, <laughs> too bad we can't start a hype train, eh? Hey, uh, hey, Tom, that'd be kind of cool. Um, Maybe one day. Good morning, Alan. Good to see you. Uh, for those of you who don't, don't know, Alan Dyer ha has a uh, Facebook page called Amazing Sky. He also writes uh, for various publications, including Sky News and a website called Astro Gear Today. He just did an amazing review on the Gear 90. Um, uh, I have shared links to it on the Starfield Optics page. I encourage you to go and read the review. Uh, it is a, it's a really, really nice uh, review that he has, has written. Um, and I have no um, no arguments at all with it. So, uh, good morning, Lynn. And who else is there? Closed captions are great. Yep, excellent. Uh, okay, so we're going to let that sit for a little bit. And we'll look at the, uh, let's go look at the actual uh, website itself. So you can see that this is a, uh, um, a peel-on uh, product. And... Uh, there are, uh, it, th this has been used all over the world. The uh, owner of the company, the CEO, uh, James, uh, he actually went to LIGO and he had um, sprayed down the mirrors and the optics that they use at LIGO and he cleaned the optics at LIGO. So to me, if LIGO is, uh, sees this as a good product, it's a good enough product for me. Yeah, that's my standard. Um, but I've used this on my optics as well and it literally just peels right off and cleans it right up. Now, what I have noticed is if I have watermarks, it doesn't work well with watermarks. What this is, is it's a uh, it's a polymer and it has a solvent in it. The solvent is safe for uh, coated optics, um, but that solvent doesn't seem to work with watermarks. So there is a pre-treating uh, spray that we would spray on to the optics first that'll break down those watermarks. And then uh, uh, once that, does what it's supposed to do, we can put the polymer on it and it, the polymer will go dissolve all of the things that shouldn't be there, um, grab onto it and when you peel it off, it cleans it right up. There's some good examples on the internet as well. Let's see if we can, um, maybe uh, there's a picture here. Um, nope. Instructions as, as I was explaining. I should have checked that before. Applications. So we can see where they have used them in some some, applica uh, some application. Here's a really good example. So here's the Takahashi uh, telescope. Um, and uh, it, look, it looks like it's gone through hell. Um, probably outside an uh, observatory, remote observatory, where it's exposed to the elements, um, uh, dust and moisture and humidity that will uh, create uh, um, layers of crap basically that sits on top of the optics so now with the pho uh, photonic solution being applied to it we can see there that's just reddish tinge here and that gets peeled off optics are as good as new um, here's another example of um, this looks like an rc same idea where there's a mirror and uh, no the eye drop does not work here <laughs> and uh, um, it, the exact same thing we have a beautifully uh, brand new 
factory fresh uh, mirror. So, um, you know, this is a very, very good uh, way of cleaning optics. Now, it's not, it's not cheap. I, uh, it is not uh, a spray on type thing uh, for 20 bucks. Um, it is expensive, but it's an entire kit that you will buy. There are different solu um, uh, applica uh, different kits for different applications. If you have an FCT, you need to buy a kit that's meant for an FCT. If you have a refractor, you buy a kit that's for a refractor. I mentioned earlier about O-rings. So if we take a look, I'm going to switch back to... Nope. There we go. All right. If we had... Uh, if this was um, an objective for a refractor or if it was an eyepiece, what I would do is actually get an O-ring... And if the O-ring didn't fit, I would cut the O-ring and um, uh, cut it down to size. I would actually cover it in the polymer itself, right? I would coat it in the uh, first contact polymer and um, uh, allow it to stick to the, to the optic. Now, what that does is it creates a barrier, right? So it doesn't, um, the, the solution doesn't get behind the uh, optics itself and then thus creating um, a bigger issue where uh, we have the solution behind the optics where we, we can't get it. In an eyepiece that would be very bad. Um, in an SCT that could be a real pain. Uh, if we get behind the corrector plate, um, same thing with uh, um, uh, a refractor. So you might want to consider putting that, that kind of uh, O-ring to create a barrier or you can be very careful when you brush it on. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, you should be good. So I'm gonna just test this really quick to see if this is, no, we're not quite dry yet. That's a bit of a thick layer. So we'll let that sit a little bit more. While we're waiting for this to go, let's do, uh, let's do some Q&A. Does anyone have any uh, questions that they want to uh, want to ask that we can go over? Um, anything about specific product, about imaging? Um, I'm sure you've noticed I'm wearing my Batman shirt that metric today in honor of Kevin Conroy. Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Kevin Conroy was the voice of Batman for the past for, for over 30 years. Um, starting from the animated series, he's been in video games, the movies, all the animated stuff, um, and he passed away yesterday. I was quite upset about that. Um, so I, I wear this shirt in his honor. Um, uh, so yeah, so if anyone has any questions, let's um, let's take some questions and and go from there. Uh, Joey, is it a matter of time uh, before before I big get a big thump on my filters? It is just a matter of time. And that's why you want to buy part number RFC T1, which is the kit that we're using today. It is the uh, trial kit. Uh, I've got four of these left in stock. How about pollen? Yes, Lynn, absolutely. This will break down pollen and um, make it disappear. So if you have spots of pollen, let the polymer sit there. Uh, it will dissolve and break it down and peel it off uh, without any issue. It might need one or two application, uh, two or three applications in order to fully get it, depending on the thickness of the pollen and how long it's been sitting there, um, how long it's been hardened uh, onto the uh, onto the optics itself. But yes, it will, it will, it will remove uh, pollen without any issue. All right, let's see. Any, did I miss any other questions? Just going through this really quick. 50 bytes. No, 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 no bytes or bits here. Wrong platform. Um, okay, let's take a look at this again and see how, how we're doing. Nope. Not quite yet. All right, so we'll, we'll let that sit. Can you use too much of a polymer? No, you can't use too much of a polymer. The only thing is it's going to take a little bit longer to uh, to dry so that you can lift it off. And I think that's the issue I have now. I have a little too much polymer uh, that's holding down the, the mesh. If you pull it off and you end up getting um, some polymer left onto the optic or to the filter, that's not a problem. Just put on more polymer. It'll attach to itself. When you go peel that off, it'll peel it off uh, without... Uh, any issue as well, and uh, we you don't have a problem. All right, Joe. I noticed you didn't go to edges. Do you just go for where the print is, or you can do the coat the entire filter? You can coat the entire filter. That's not a problem. I'm just doing it here on the um, actual thumbprint itself because that's the only part that needs to be cleaned. The rest of the filter was perfectly fine. I could do the entire thing if I wanted to. Um, it is nothing to stop me from doing so. There is plenty of 
product in here to allow me to do that. You know, I, I've cleaned off two filters now. You can see, right, this is a, a 30 milliliter bottle, so there, there's still a lot of product. This will last me a long time. Um, uh, this, uh, I did a, um, yeah, the focal reducer with this, did the entire optic on it, and um, I cleaned an Antlia filter twice with this because I had to do a second coating because I pulled it off too too long, uh, way too long to pull off. How long leave it on? Um, it takes about 20 minutes or so to, uh, to fully cure up and dry so that you can pull it off, and then after that. But you know what? Here's the beauty of it. There's no set time on how long you can do it. So uh, if you have a, uh, a telescope that you want to put in the storage, you want to keep the optics clean on it, you can put the, this polymer on there and leave it on and put it in the storage. And then you can peel it, off, peel it off when you're ready to go. There's no um, uh, expiry on it. There's no time on it to say you've waited too long. It's not going to come off or it'll be too hard. It will literally uh, peel off without any issue. There are some... Uh, companies in the U.S. that uh, this was part of the initial uh, conversation I had with um, First Contact when we started working with them. They're telling me of some of their clients in the U.S. where uh, th these are more um, professional military contractor type companies that use this product, and they will actually spray down their mirror. Right, we're talking like like big large mirrors for you know probably a spy satellite. Who knows? Um, they'll spray down uh, their mirror and then they'll transport it like that. So now it, the mirror is protected. If you have a big daub, this stuff is perfect for it. Spray it down, put your daub away, or if you're going to be transporting it somewhere, keep the mirror protected from any crap that might sit on it. Same thing with well, any optic, really. So there is no set time on how long you can you can keep it uh, keep the, the polymer on the optic. No, there will not be any Black Friday deals on it. It's on. Oh, I should say. I, I should say though that right now, all the in-stock stuff that we have is on sale. So if you go to our website, and if you go to our, our website, so our main website, there we go, and you go under sales and specials, click on that, you'll see the first contact polymer, which you can click on. Everything that's in stock is on sale uh, right now. So there is, uh, and if you wanted to buy the kit, like I said, I have four of them left. Uh, there's a trial cleaning kit now for $49.99. Okay, really cool idea. Leave it in for storage purposes. A absolutely. So it's a great way to keep your uh, optics clean when you're not using them. Um, I have it sprayed down on my uh, on one of my big scopes. I have I have no plans of using for a while. Um, so I sprayed it on, put it away. Keep you know. There's moisture in the air; it'll automatically attract dust and, and other stuff I don't want on there, and uh, um, you know, muck up the optics. Uh, if you don't clean watermarks, what about smears and film? I use isopropylene with a little bit of distilled water. After cleaning, I still see some smear. Yep, that yeah, and that that's the issue with using uh, alcohol and and um, distilled water. Remember, alcohol and water are not going to mix very well. Um, necessarily. Uh, so you're going to get a little bit of uh, a smear. If you're going to have watermarks, this is where you need to have the um, uh, um, the water the water drop uh, uh, pre-treatment solution. And I have it here. I'm going to go back to uh, the desktop. So I'm going to click on it right now. Alright. This is the water spot treatment. So if you have water spots, you can spray this on first. And um, uh, then you can uh, apply the polymer uh, to clean off the rest of uh, your optic. So that, that's what you would use for, for watermarks itself. Um, uh, it, you, have to, you have to be careful with some isopropylene alcohols because they can affect optics, uh, or depending on the type of coatings that are, uh, have been applied. Uh, you should um, really just use some kind of solution that's meant for uh, optics. Whether you, like even the camera stores have have a spray that will spray onto the actual. Uh, uh, you can spray onto lenses. That's usually pretty good too. That's good to just do a general cleaning, take off dust uh, and such. But um, if you have uh, actual marks or pollen, it usually will not do anything. Okay, let's check this again. Nope, not that one. There we go. Okay, so are we good to go? Yeah, I think we're going to lift. There we go. Yep. So here it's going to lift right 
off. Oh, that was so satisfying. Okay, so there is. Oh, we lifted off. Came came right off. Right, put that aside. And if we look right now, I could probably do another uh, treatment on this. But if we look, there is no thumbprint. Oops, there we go. There's no thumbprint at all. A little bit of markings there. Looks like some dust. Right? So I can do this. I, I can do another application if I wanted to. Right? Uh, maybe I pulled it off too soon. Right? But the thumbprint is gone. And that thumbprint that I had applied, I applied yesterday before I left for the day. Uh, so it's been sitting there for a little while. Um, uh, I wasn't eating chicken wings or anything beforehand, so it wasn't really that bad. But you were able to see the thumbprint. It was. It was a big, ugh, right on the right on the optic itself. So, um, can you use that to unlock a fingerprint scanner? Um, no, I can't see my thumbprint on there anymore. It dissolves, it dissolves all the grease and and uh, uh, anything that's on there. So yeah, my there's no thumbprint. But <laughs> that's a good question. That's a good question. That was quite satisfying too. That that peel. Right? It's like getting a cell phone for the first time or some other device that's got that plastic on it. But yeah. Anyways. Okay. So let's do a quick recap. We have the uh, first contact polymer solutions in stock. We have various kits in stock, depending on uh, how much you want to buy in terms of quantity of the actual solution. Uh, there are um, some that come with a, a thinner. That thinner is used for the polymer itself uh, for spray application. Uh, and there's a little spray bottle that comes with that kit as well. If you have any specific questions on to which kit you should pro probably get, you know, hit me up on the message in the comments or send me a message on Facebook, um, and I can I can make a recommendation. I do have some of these kits, the, the trial kit, the trial kits in stock right now. Um, I've got four left, uh, and they're forty nine ninety nine each. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're just doing filters uh, or eyepieces, you know, that'll probably last you a long time. You start getting into optics, uh, larger optics and SCT or mirror, it won't be enough uh, solution there for you. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's all I have. All right, so um, I know what everyone's asking, uh, has been asking me, um, Black Friday deals. There will be some Black Friday deals. I can't tell you what they are right now, um, but make sure you be check you're checking the website uh, regularly starting um, possibly next week. Yeah, um, so we will have, uh, there'll be some Black Friday sales on. Uh, if you are interested in the Lunar and Solar System Imaging Workshop put on by uh, us and Gary Palmer, it is on a Tuesday, not a Thursday. I need to fix that. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Um, on the 29th, it is on the, um, it is on the uh, website. As soon as you come in, there'll be a pop-up, or you can click on Imaging Courses, and it'll take you to it. Uh, if you have any other questions, you know, hit me up in the comments, and uh, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, and uh, you know, let's get our optics clean. If we're going to put stuff in the storage, just clean them up, keep them protected, and uh, put them into uh, uh, put them away safely, so that we can easily um, you know peel that off in the spring and get imaging in crystal clear. So, anyways. Clear skies, everyone. Thank you for uh, tuning in, and I will talk to you next week.